What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video for the YZ250F build. On the counter now I have the carburetor. So I'm going to start pulling that apart right now and it's pretty dirty so I gotta definitely clean it up. So what we got here is a Kian carburetor. That's what they use on these uh, bikes. So first thing I'm going to do is probably take the uh, all the cables and hoses off. And uh, if you uh, take one of these apart, make sure you take tons of pictures because there's just stuff going all over the place. Pretty busy little carburetors. So I'm into the accelerator pump here and if you can see it, it is just full of green crap. So that's kind of an indication of what uh, I'm going to encounter inside this carburetor here. Um, so I think I'm probably going to have to buy a whole repair kit for this, which is going to probably run about, by the time shipping's done, probably about 80 bucks for everything. The repair kit plus the mid-body gasket and all that stuff. I didn't want to spend that kind of money, but... Uh, you'll lose a lot of money when you try and flip a bike that won't start. So I'm going to have to definitely get a repair kit for this. Digging more into it now and you can see like all the green crap in there now. I pulled out the pilot jet here and it is just disgusting so this will definitely definitely need to be uh attended to and uh definitely need a full full rebuild on it i don't like tearing these down because i don't tear them down very much so actually this is the very first uh carburetor like this i've torn down and there's a lot of a lot of stuff going on here so it would take me a while probably to put it back together so got this thing torn down about as far as I care to all that stuff right there is all kind of easily uh, accessible there just to spray it off and clean it I don't see any ports or orifices or anything like that but uh, the rest of the body here I gotta kind of soak it in something and see if I can get it uh, get it as clean as I can the uh, mid body gasket is kind of hard to get to because it uh, you gotta have these special little uh, screw heads which i don't have so i'm gonna leave that leave that be and just start uh, cleaning everything up so now i got the carb soaking in some varsol there now i've ordered some parts for it so that'll be a while so i'll soak the carb in varsol for for a while but now i can put this gear on so primary drive gear it's 13 tooth so it'll go It'll go with the writing in, which I think is strange, but uh, if you put it this way, it'll grind on this piece here. So you want to put it on there, and that will butt into this uh, collar here. And then after that, you can put on the little uh, lock washer here. Then you're not. You should be able to put it in gear and uh, torque that into fifty four foot pounds.
So as you can see, I just hit that with the impact. I'm not a big fan of that, but it was just too hard to get a hold of the gear, even with the little tusk wrench I had there. That's for the uh, flywheel, usually. But it just wouldn't wouldn't quite work on this, so I just hit it with the impact. So now you just uh, take these tabs and you just bend them over onto the flats. And so you just make sure that it's not gonna come loose on you. But the torque spec for this bolt is uh, 54 foot pounds. There, you got the lock washer on now. Now, uh, if the nut does want to come loose, it's not going anywhere. So this sprocket will never ever fall off. So now that you got your French sprocket on, now you just put your case saver back on. Sometimes you want to put your chain on first, but uh, I find if you uh, feed the chain in through here and you can grab a tooth, you can just pull this through and it'll pull the chain around. It's not a big deal if you have this on. All right, so now I'm digging into the front brakes here. Now, uh, everything in this video, I'm pretty much just gonna take apart and then the next video I'm gonna have to put it all back together just because I'm waiting for some uh, parts to come in so uh, I've got these brakes partially apart but now I'm going to uh, take the hose off of this and I'm gonna clean this up and uh, get it ready for powder coating so what I'm gonna do to get these two pistons out is just uh, put the handlebars in the vise over there and put this on the bar and I'm gonna I'm gonna open up the reservoir there and keep adding oil and keep pumping this until uh, these two spit right out. I got these out now and uh, the easiest way I find to do it is just fill your reservoir up a little bit and just pump that brake and you just you're gonna have to like clamp one down and stop it let, let the other one catch up and then uh, let them push out and one's always gonna go faster than the other so you got to stop that one and then let the other one catch up and just let them work out until they spit out otherwise you're gonna be using like uh, tools on there and you're gonna be marking these up and everything like that and you might have a leak after if you gouge them too much with a tool. So this is the way I like to do, do this and get them out of there. So I got the front caliper all taken apart now. So I, I'm going to powder coat this so I've got to put this in the uh, parts washer and uh, clean this surface up especially well because I have to tape all that off while I'm uh, sandblasting it and while I'm powder coating it so uh, I usually just put uh, bolts into here uh, metric bolts work and I also uh, just went ahead and stamped it with the little uh, NMX on there uh, northern MX just uh, just cuz builder stamp I guess so now I'll put this in the parts washer and uh, give it a good scrub. So I got everything ready to go into the sandblaster here. So now I just have to do a little bit of uh, rearranging so I can start uh, doing the sandblasting and uh, powder coating.
I've got the parts all sandblasted and ready to go in the oven, so I'm gonna cook them out for about a half an hour in the oven at about 450 degrees. So I got the parts all cooked out, they're cooled down now, so I can uh, handle them. And I'm gonna give them a wipe with this uh, acetone here, and then get them over to my uh, little makeshift uh, booth over there for powder coating, and uh, do the first uh, first layer of powder coat on this uh, on these pieces. So I've got everything pretty well set up here now. I just need to basically hang the pieces in there and then uh, what I'm gonna do is first I'm going to uh, use this uh, Eastwood hot coat it is uh, extreme chrome so I'm gonna do that as the first layer and then uh, put it in the oven 450 and then you let the uh, powder coat flow out and then you down it to uh, 400 and let it cure for 20 minutes So that's what it looks like uh, before you put it in the oven. It's uh, gonna turn into a chrome, but as you can see, it starts out as almost like a really flat silver, like a matte silver. So I'm gonna do these pieces one at a time. I'm gonna take this right off the rack actually and do these one at a time because you gotta let these cool down to a certain temperature and these pieces are gonna cool down uh, at way different rates. So I'm gonna do them one at a time to achieve the uh, look I want. So. I'm going to put this in the oven right now. So next up guys, when I pull that piece out and let it cool down to about 150-ish uh, degrees Fahrenheit, I'm gonna hit it with this uh, Eastwood hot coat. Uh, it's a trans uh, translucent uh, rally blue. And that's how I've been achieving the, uh, the kind of look I'm getting on the bike for the spring and all the uh, engine mounts and everything like that. So I'm gonna hit that uh, next.
All right guys, so the pieces are both done here. I just went ahead and did this one. I think it turned out really awesome. Uh, if you look at it in a different light, it definitely turns out a little different. I think I hit this piece especially a little bit too soon. So uh, the powder coat started to liquefy as soon as it hit the piece. So uh, I have a little bit of trouble with the uh, heat gun I have uh, taking the proper temperature sometimes. So I'll definitely have to look into another one maybe that'll uh, take the proper temperature through the chrome when it's on there. Uh, this one here turned out really good. I just went ahead and did this off camera, but uh, everything coated evenly and uh, turned out really well. All right, guys, that's going to be the end of this video. As you can see, the bike's behind me looking awesome. So I'm waiting for parts now to come in. So when those come in, then I'm definitely going to start uh, uh, ramping up the build and start building it quicker. But uh, in the meantime, I've been just doing like parts like this, powder coating. They're turning out awesome. Uh, which is good. So I can't wait to see them on the bike. So if you're enjoying this build, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the notifications bell. Uh, give the video a thumbs up if you like it. And uh, thanks for watching.